Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and welcome to another exciting After Effects tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to be playing around with some ink spatter elements, as well as some other things inside of After Effects. Now, here's an idea of what we're going to be creating. Also, something like this. Okay, now today we're going to actually create these ink spatter elements ourselves inside of After Effects. Now, you might be better off going and getting some ink and some paper, spattering it on the paper and taking some pictures of it with your digital camera and bringing them in that way. Now, if you'd like to just create them in After Effects, here's a pretty good way to do it. I'm going to create a new composition and I'm just going to use NTSC DV and choose OK. And I'm going to make a new solid and I'm gonna make it white just for the time being. Choose OK. Now I'm gonna to go to the effects and presets and we're gonna type in particle and we're gonna to go to CC particle world and if you don't have these plugins check your After Effects installation disk they should be on there somewhere. Then I'm gonna drag it out to our layer and here we have this great particle generator and we're gonna manipulate it to look somewhat like ink spatter. So what I want to do is first take off all this extra stuff. I'm going to choose off for the grid information. Then I'm going to go down to the particle, physics, and producer, and just so I can see all of these controls. First of all, I want to shut the gravity to zero. Then I want to change the particle type to lens convex, or basically a sphere. And then I'm going to go ahead and play around with these settings. I'm going to turn the max opacity up to 100 and the birth size up a little bit, maybe a 0.5, and the depth size down to zero. And the size variation, maybe about 85. Now let's play around with the velocity of the particles. If we just bring this down, that looks pretty good. And we can also, again, play with the birth size to create somewhat of a spatter look. Now, this looks pretty good, and of course, if we go through here, it's actually generating particles. Now, we can just take still frames from this at any given time and create a custom ink spatter particle, and that's what we're going to do. So, what I want to do is create still frames from this animation. So, from pretty much here, I'm going to choose Composition, Save Frame as File, and that adds it to the render queue. And what I'm going to do is just kind of go to a few different spots in the timeline and create some still frame points. So I'm going to go here, choose Composition, Save Frame as File. And you can use the shortcut, Control-Alt-S, and just create a few different still frames. And that's going to add it here in the render queue. Go ahead and set your location up, but we want to use the Photoshop output module which is going to include the RGB plus the alpha. And that way there you have the transparency embedded. Click render and that's going to render them all out into still frames. Okay, so I've imported these ink elements as PSD files and we're going to use these to composite with. So we no longer need our composition with the animation. So I'm going to go to composition, new composition, and we're going to call this Ink Man. And this is uh, my character that I made up. He, uh, he fights crime as well as poor penmanship. So I'm going to select OK. And what we're going to do is just drag one of the ink elements out to the composition. And with the layer selected, I'm going to choose Effects, Color Correction, Hue, and Saturation. And the reason I'm going to add this is so I can bring the lightness down all the way to negative 100. And that turns the layer black. Now we can't see it, but I'm just going to shut this off for now. And then I'm going to create a new solid. And this is going to be our background, so I'm going to call this background and make it a dark red color. Then I'm going to create a new solid again, this time black. And we'll call this our mask. And we'll take both of these layers and just put them underneath our ink layer. Now I want to go ahead and take our mask layer and add a circular mask with the elliptical mask tool. Just draw something like that. And now if you hit the letter M, we bring up the mask options, we want to make it subtract, then hit the letter F, and we'll feather it a bunch. And that just looks nice. Now, I'm going to go ahead and lock these two bottom layers now that they're set up, because we're no longer going to make adjustments to them at this point. What I want to do now is make our text layer. So I'm just going to take the text tool, 
Type in Ink Man. Looking pretty good. And by the way, if you're wondering, I believe it's an Arial Black font with the italicized switch on. Now, we want to make this layer over top our ink spanner. So let's just place it there and go back to our ink layer and turn the and turn the hue and saturation effect on, which will turn it black. And that way we can actually read our text. Now the next thing we need to do is put these layers into 3D space. So to do that we're going to check the 3D space box and I'm going to create a new camera. And we can just use the 35 millimeter preset and choose OK. And what we'll do now at this point is animate the camera. So I'm going to hit P on the keyboard to bring up the position of the camera, set a keyframe, move forward maybe about 40 frames, and then take the orbit camera tool and just kind of rotate around a little bit. Same, go back to the beginning and just kind of rotate it in one direction. And that way we just create a simple little animation. Then with the position selected, I'm going to hit F9, which will add some smooth curves uh, to the keyframes. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now, let's add some additional ink elements. So I'm going to go to about the middle of the animation where the elements are kind of squarely faced towards the camera. And I'm going to duplicate this ink element, hitting Control D. Then I'm going to move it. And be careful when you're moving it is only move it using the Y or X axis because we want this one to stay on the plane of zero. So not airplanes, but three-dimensional planes. So just move it over. And this is the fun part where you can pretty much do whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the layer again and put it somewhere over here. And now we can play this back and you'll kind of see what's going on. Okay, also let's take the ink layer and move it forward off of the background and that way it looks like it's just in front of the ink. Now let's get a little creative with these ink elements. Um, first thing, let's just duplicate another one and let's shut the hue and saturation off for it so now we have a white ink element. And we pretty much can do whatever we want with it and what I like to do is change the transfer mode to overlay. And I know it's going out of the frame, but just overlay will do it. And then that looks pretty good. Now duplicate it again, Control D, and just move it around until it looks good. And we'll go ahead and make one more for good measure. Then let's select these three, hold down Control to select them individually. And using the Z axis, let's push these back into 3D space. Then we can play around with the scale of them and scale them up or scale them down just to make them look a little bit more random and I'll just move these around like I said uh, this is where you want to be uh, creative and just uh, throw them around Okay, so now we have some in the foreground and now we have some in the background. But let's bring some up close to the camera. So these three, I believe, are red. And these ones are black. So we can keep track of them. What I'm going to do is duplicate one of these black ones and just move it around by the X and Y and then bring the Z axis forward and then just kind of position it so that it's not overtaking the composition and that way we get a little bit of some parallax so that the elements look a little bit more dynamic and again let's put another one just above all of this and that should be kind of fun so you can make it as messy as you like I'm going to turn the motion blur on for all of our layers so I'm just going to click and just drag down we don't need to turn on for the bottom two and then the switch for the motion blur of the comp and let's go and play this back so obviously the possibilities are limitless um, now you might be asking yourself why why is it so fun to composite with ink I don't know but 
I guess we just like making messes that we don't really have to clean up. I know I do. Hmm. Um, also, I'll point out that uh, Harry J. Frank, another After Effects guru, has a great little video on doing a similar technique with ink elements. So I just wanted to point out that he's uh, he did it before me, but uh, hopefully we can still be friends. Now let's move on to another technique where we're going to actually create sort of an ink spatter. So I'm going to go to Comp 1 and just hit 0. And we're going to create something similar to this. So let's go ahead and create a new composition. And I'm just going to kind of simplify this and just make a new gray solid. And make a new black solid. Now let's go ahead and create our ink drop. So I'm going to take the pen tool and just draw an ink drop. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and let's go ahead and scale this down a little bit. Now let's turn the layers into 3D layers by hitting the 3D layer switch and we'll take our gray solid or our floor and we'll hit the W key and rotate it till it's flat. Then if we take the selection tool we can bring this down so we sort of have a floor. And if we toggle the transparency we can see what we're doing. Then let's take our drop layer and hit P for the position and then set a keyframe for the first point let's just move it up above and then let's go forward and just drag it down on the y-axis till it goes through our floor and we can turn on some motion blur okay so now what I want to do is take one of these ink elements drag it into this composition and now with it selected I'm gonna choose effects color correction hue and saturation and we can click colorize and bring the lightness down and pretty much color it whatever we want. For now, we'll just do black. And let's make it a 3D layer. Then I'm going to hit W and rotate it on the X axis till it's flat. And if you hold down Shift, it should sort of disappear once it's facing the camera. But if we move it down, you can see that it's still there. Now, here's the tricky part. Just keep pushing it down until it disappears. Then just move it up just a little bit so that it's right on top of that layer. Now, let's go ahead and time this animation up and move our ink drop just as it lands. And we can also scale it down just a little bit by hitting S. Looking good. Now we want to create sort of a splash. Um, so what we're going to do is take the circle elliptical mask tool and what I want to do is take it out of 3D layer mode and then click in the center of the ink, hold down control and shift and we'll just sort of create a circle then if we take the Add Vertex tool, we can just kind of make it a little more ink-like. Perfect. I guess that's more Ninja Star-like, but either way. And then we're going to go hit MM, bring up the Mask Expansion, and keyframe it to all the way to nothing. Set a keyframe, move forward, and then bring it all the way up. And so now we just have this sort of splash look. Then we turn it back to a 3D layer and we need to rotate it back into position. And now if we time the animation up by moving the layer into place we have sort of created an animation. And then we can create a new camera and add a little animation so that you can tell it's 3D. I'll hit P and keyframe the position. Let's go and play that back. Okay, now obviously uh, you want to be a little more creative than a gray solid floor, but I'm sure you'll think of some really creative ways to use this technique. Um, I hope you found this tutorial useful, and I uh, hope you guys have fun uh, making a lot of messes that I certainly won't be cleaning up. 
Okay, well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Kramer, and you can visit me on creativecow.net in the After Effects and Photoshop forums. Also, if you want to visit my website, it's www.videocopilot.net. We have a bunch of uh, other tutorials as well as some great DVDs for sale, so check them out. And uh, thanks again.